Nut Nerd Podcast, Episode 253, iPhone 12 Event, High Speed. Welcome to the Not Nerd Podcast. I'm Nate Heath, and we are here to help you tech better. Here with me, in person, Mr. Dave Baylor. Yes, we've decided to meet in the same space today to yes. talk about something near and dear to both of our hearts. Apple today has made some incredible announcements, and the flagship announcement I want everybody to know about and to focus their attention on right now HomePod Mini. Yes. Is that what we're talking about today? That is all we're going to talk about. No, we've got so <laughs> much from the Apple announcement. A couple quick things. If you're trying to picture what our new in-person recording setup looks like, <laughs> imagine an exact replica of the vice presidential debate. We've got dual plexiglass. Yes. We're about 25 feet away from each other. I can other. barely see you across the hall. Yes. Honestly. And no moderator, thankfully, so we yeah. can uh, speak as we please. But... Uh, it is also, as we mentioned last week, it is Prime Day. I want to say real quick, I looked through a bunch of deals. There's not a whole lot there, but one thing everybody needs to do, go to amazon.notnerd.com, type in gift card. If you buy or recharge your own gift card, your own gift card balance, $40, you get $10 free. And now, is this just for today and tomorrow during today Prime Day? Today and tomorrow, 13th and 14th. So if you hear this episode right away, Go buy that. You get a free $10 because let's be honest, you're going to spend $50 at Amazon. Oh, I'm sure. So, Well, I don't even have a, an Amazon gift card that I... That you, I ha you have one in your account, your virtual gift card oh, okay. balance. So, so you can just add to that and then it's like... So just, it's it's kind of like an in-store credit that you, you could pay money and get, yes. but they give you an extra $10. Yeah. I'm, I think I'm going to do that. Yeah, I did it this morning. So do that. So that's Amazon Prime. There are some deals there, but uh, you can go check those out. We... <laughs> Hey, not to be uh, undone with our my my little cheeky announcement of the HomePod Mini, which we will discuss in a moment. Yes. I see on Amazon you can get the uh, the uh, little hockey puck Amazon Alexa for eighteen ninety nine. Oh wow! So if you want to have a similar experience, but in this much smaller package on a different service, maybe. You <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so maybe not the same type of experience at all is what i'm saying <laughs> exactly 1899 okay. is pretty cheap that is very cheap okay the apple iphone 12 event mm -hmm. happened today it did beautiful video streamed online we watched it together it was very exciting mm -hmm. we were uh, holding hands yes and we were uh, waiting in anticipation as tim cook walked out and, and started to announce things but yes yeah so we knew we were going to get iphone announcements today but tim cook actually started off talking about the home and mm -hmm. how we've spent a lot more time at home this year yes and how important our home is and as you mentioned they announced a new product, the HomePod Mini. So what was that, a year or two ago, they came out with the HomePod. It's like $350 starting price. It was a, a rounded cylinder. I mean, all cylinders are round. Yeah. The top and bottoms yes. were rounded as well. Um, not, I mean, like a foot tall, yes. something like that. Large. The size of a football or yes. something like that. And it took the world by storm? Mm. Not so much. It was expensive, apparently sounded good, but didn't yeah. have a lot of features that people are used to with these other voice smart home devices. Yes, yeah. So the HomePod, uh, I knew a couple people that had them. They really enjoyed them, but again, expensive. So now they have the HomePod Mini, which is more sphere-like. Yes, I would, I would classify it as spherical spherical uh, with mesh fabric and basically they've tried to create something for more of the public <laughs> uh, they did announce pricing that it'll come in at $99 it's going to be available in November for pre-order they've done a lot of improvements so it works better with uh, you know your iPhones and Siri and it'll recognize different voices so everybody's stuff calendars can be synced up to it so I have a question that you may know um, does the home pod allow you to connect it to the Apple TV so that you have like when you're watching TV shows and movies does it 
is it like a, a sound bar? Yes. Does it work like that? Yes. And you can use multiple for, with the home pods, you could do stereo. And they talked about with this one, you could have the whole home audio. Again, very similar to Sonos, Amazon, mm -hmm. Google products. Uh, but now that they're coming in at $99 instead of $349, yeah. you could get them cheaper than that. Uh, it does make it much more approachable. Now, one of the things I was reading about before the event that is a possibility is Apple's ultra wideband chip kind of this mm -hmm. location aware thing they start building into the newer computers and devices if this has that which i'm guessing it would uh there's a lot of functionality that could be allowed with the home i saw somebody pontificating that let's say you're at work uh, you've got a, let's say it works with a home pod mini you've got your tablet at home you could get an alert if your tablet moves at home. So mm. like if the kids aren't supposed to be on the tablet or, you know, somebody breaks into your house or whatever it is. I think I've got bigger problems if yes. someone breaks into my house and takes my tablet. Yes, uh, but so that some really interesting stuff that I'm sure we'll hear more. But uh, at $99, Dave, what are you thinking on this? I'm thinking it's still a no for me. If it were $49, then I think I would just... You know, this is uh, in the checkout aisle yes. candy display. Yes. yes, I'll pick one of Add these up. Add to order. Yeah. But for $99, it's still not compelling enough for me. Now, if I were an Apple Music subscriber, it becomes more compelling. Yes. But I'm still on Spotify. And according to the video we watched today, it's not Spotify compatible. Yeah. Although they are partnering with other music services like Amazon Music, for example, should work with it, um, which I have the free version of that. But um, right now I'm still on Spotify. I think I'm going to stick with my Alexa devices and maybe save my money for some other products we're going to talk about later today. Yes. Uh, I am intrigued by it. I'll probably wait to hear a little more. I mean, you can't even pre-order it till November 6th. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that 99 the original home pod i was like i have no use for this uh, but this one we'll see what yeah, maybe what some of that other stuff get some reviews and uh but we've got some time on that <laughs> yeah with the several weeks before you can even pre-order these things it's uh, so november 6th pre-orders 16th they're going to be shipping uh, that's a while to think about it yes which is bad for apple because people are going to think about it. <laughs> They're going to yeah. go, do I really need this? And they'll go, I just bought a 10 pack of uh, Echo <laughs> devices on Amazon Prime Day <laughs> yeah. for the same price. Yeah. Uh, so then they, that was a pretty quick segment. They had a really, I always encourage you, if you have the time, go watch the full video. They did a very Wes Anderson looking <laughs> set of a house with the whole front cut off so you can see all the different rooms again the video production on these apple announcements is uh beyond impressive yeah when they first showed the first room i was like okay well this is obviously a set and it was like one living room and the, but then later on they zoomed out to an entire basically the entire facade of a house that was cut off with all these various rooms and so i was very impressed with the the practical set that they built on some large soundstage, probably buried deep underground yeah. in Apple Park somewhere. Uh, but it was impressive from a technical standpoint to see them do that. But Yes. Okay. Well, on to the good stuff. iPhone. Yes. And they started talking about iPhone. And the first topic <laughs> that they went on forever about was... Droned on about. Droned on about. Not drones, but <laughs> 5G. Now, we've been hearing about 5G for years. I am very excited for when it is widely available. I have said on the podcast, I don't think it's something that everybody is going to have access to for quite a while. Uh, but they then they... We were joking while watching it. They brought on Hans Vestberg <laughs> from Verizon for the world's longest Verizon commercial about oh how gosh. great their 5G is. And uh, they must have paid a pretty penny to be the carrier that was able to be on stage for that. Well, and my take on that was it feels like Apple is shoehorning 5G into the phone. It's, you know, it's going to cost more money to put it in there. You know, they're unable to drop prices because of its presence, you know? And so it feels like they almost had to have this big, long Verizon commercial to justify why we're putting this in yes. the phone. And we want you to be excited about 5G because this is the next big thing. 
at the same time, I feel like if they wouldn't have put it in the phone, nobody would have really cared. Yeah. And so it's like it's it, Hans was there to justify yes. why we put this in the phone. Yes, I, I would agree. So he went on and on about that. Uh, you could probably just skip that. Here's the advantage <laughs> to listening to us first. You could skip the Verizon section. Yeah. Uh, because then they went right into the iPhone 12 with 5g yeah yeah that i mean i think that's the name yes. iphone 12 with 5g you know? yes now with more sprites so the iphone 12 is the i was going to say the low end model no it's the middle model in their full <laughs> lineup uh, but there's the iphone 12 and the iphone 12 pro which we'll be talking about later but they've changed the design and Dave almost had to ask me to leave the room because I was so excited. <laughs> they brought back flat edges. If you remember yeah. back on the iPhone 4s and 5s and the SE, the old SE, those nice flat edges. On the iPhone 12, it's this beautiful brushed material. They've got five different colors. Uh, they look really, really nice. Yeah, the um, the smooth flat edges. They also inside of that exterior is a Super Retina XDR display, and they're doing away with LCD screens across the board on iPhone 12 type devices. The 11, the 10R before it, those both used LCD panels, and then the Pro models used OLED. From stem to stern, if that is the correct way to say that they are doing OLEDs across the entire lineup. So that was exciting to see. They've got 2 million to one contrast ratio. What does that even mean? <laughs> yeah. All the, the, we were also mentioning that they really spend a lot of time on specs in these announcements and mm -hmm. it, it's a great, great display. And, yeah. you know, their best display ever. That's and, uh, all you need to know. Yes. It's better than last year's display. It's going to be brighter. It's going to be. Um, but speaking of the display, one of the things that they talked about is they have worked with Corning to create this new ceramic shield. Again, they talked about all these. <laughs> it's a and, force field that comes yeah. out of the screen. No, it's yes. not. It is these not. crystals that perfectly are grown together. <laughs> The most important thing of the whole announcement, four times better drop performance. That's yeah. what people care about. The screen doesn't shatter when you drop it on the ground. Yes. And I'm assuming, they didn't talk about this, but I'm assuming it's less prone to scratching as yeah, well. I Yes. So it, I mean, because both do not have to be true at the same time. Yep. Uh, and in fact, when you make things harder and more scratch resistant, they tend to be more brittle and break easier. So if you've got a phone that can withstand drops, it actually may not be as scratch resistant. So we'll see how it goes. Yes. Uh, and then they went into the new A14 Bionic chip, which again, it's the fastest chip in a smartphone. Then they gave a ton of stuff on the specs and stuff. Yeah. You don't care about that stuff. It's fast and it's, it's fast. amazing. Up to 50% faster on yes. everything. And then they tried to claim that League of Legends was the number one <laughs> mobile phone game, which... Uh, I don't think that is true no but they showed a demo of that games are going to be great on it well they had the Fortnite lined up but since epic <laughs> yeah. sued them and defected from the they had to app pick store the, uh, <laughs> next the current top game since Fortnite is in limbo yeah uh, but then again back to the important thing the camera yeah this is what people care about they're going to the beach they're going to the woods they're going to wherever to a birthday party they want to take a good picture Yes, and they have improved that. And again, the processors help with those images. They've got a new seven element lens, mm -hmm. smart HDR3, night mode, time lapse, everything. Uh, all of this stuff on the iPhone 12 models. Uh, and then they dropped one. I think I had heard a rumor of this. Some updates to wireless charging, Dave. Mm -hmm. MagSafe yeah. on iPhone. I love MagSafe on the old style. Uh, macbook computers you know you stick it on the side you trip over the cable it, it separates well they've reintroduced magsafe they've resurrected it yes um because the newer laptops don't use it and now they're making use of it in the iphone yeah. and they've got a ring of magnets on the back of these new iphones and the magsafe wireless charging adapter snaps onto the back and does its charging it's brilliant but yeah. i mean but it's more than that oh it is and it's a if you're trying to picture it if you have an apple watch or familiar how that charger works where it just kind of sucks on there but they've got all these other accessories like a little leather credit card pouch that just yeah. magnetizes the cases are designed differently so you don't have to like peel them around the edges it just snaps on with that magnet i am 
super super excited yeah. about this yeah and they showed some accessories from belkin and i'm sure others will be piling oh, yeah. on board but you know those little vent clips that you put in your car for the little yes. uh, air vent and there's a magnet on it and then you got to put a magnet on your phone that sticks on the thing well since it's a ring of magnets that surrounds the charge coil you can now snap it onto one of these very low profile uh magnetic car stands yeah but it'll also charge it at the same time so the one i have in my car for example has a little l-shaped tray that you put it in and then you got to squeeze the sides yeah. in so that it clamps it in there no more of that this just sticks on the vent you slap your phone on it and it does wireless charging while it's being held in place by the magnet so it's the best of, best of both worlds and there have been other things kind of like this but nothing as elegant because now it's like built in yeah so. yeah no i am this looks really cool i think this is going to be a big game changer they also announced a duo charger which looks like a little leather wallet that you unfold yeah. and there's a phone charger on one side and an apple watch charger on the other side yeah uh they had the air power debacle that they announced <laughs> a while back and then they never came out with but this looks like a great little charging option so after the duo charger and the MagSafe and all this stuff, they had Lisa Jackson on the roof <laughs> of the Apple campus, the big dome. And I was immediately saying, get off of there. That doesn't look safe. <laughs> yes. Yes. But she was talking about the environmental stuff and the fact uh, kind of setting it up for that they aren't going to include the power bricks <laughs> in with the phones. They'll still include the cables. They're doing the same thing with the new <laughs> iPads yeah, and I, the watches. It's so hard for me to, I mean, I had, I 100% agree with the message that these power bricks are just kind of a waste of space and most people have them or you can just go to the store and buy one if you need one. At the same time, they're not lowering the prices yes. and they're able to make their boxes smaller, which allows them to ship more. And so both, both are true at the same time. Yes. They are saving, uh, the impact on the environment by making things smaller so they can ship more at the same time and getting rid of stuff that gets put in the landfill. But they neglect to tell you that they're saving all kinds of money by not including these and being able to ship more products at the same time yes. because the packaging is smaller. But see, they don't share that part of the message. No, oh, no. That's why no. it feels disingenuous to me. Yes. And uh, they said something like, uh, making this change will be the same as taking 500,000 cars yeah. off the road in the next year, yeah. which is great. But yes, they are also, <laughs> if it was going to cost them more money. Yes. I, I wish that they would also say, and to Apple shareholders, we will save $6.9 billion yes. by not by making this change. You know? Exactly. And so then before we get to the pro phones, they announced the iPhone 12 mini. Yes. And so they started out with the run of the mill, regular old iPhone 12. And you're thinking, this is the newest thing ever. And I want it. And then they go, no, but wait, there's the iPhone 12 mini. And you're like, well, screw the iPhone 12. I want the mini. It's the same thing, but in a smaller, cuter package. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's got a 5.4 inch screen, whereas the iPhone 12 has a 6.1 inch screen. Mm -hmm. uh, this looks like a really, if you're looking for a smaller size phone, uh, this looks really, really cool. It starts at $699. And I believe the normal one starts at $799. Yes, $799 for the iPhone 12. $6.99 yeah. for the mini, uh, but it looks like a really good phone and they were able to pack everything into a smaller package. And I think they did themselves a, a disservice by having a woman hold the thing when they were walking across the set. I was like, it still looks pretty big. Yeah. They should have got a huge guy with massive hands to handle this mini to make it look diminutive. Yes. Yes. That, uh, that is true. Cause they are still much bigger than <laughs> say the old yeah. iPhone SE model. That... I'm like, this is not a mini. This is like last year's giant phone. So yes. So yeah, the the mini has all the features of the regular one. We'll talk at the end about their whole iPhone lineup, which is uh, getting larger for what they're currently going to be selling. But uh, mm -hmm. a good looking phone, if you're looking for something small with a lot of features, you're not making any compromises from the regular iPhone 12. Right. But then we got to the good stuff. The mm -hmm. iPhone 12 Pro. We've got uh, two versions the iphone 12 pro and the iphone 12 pro max and then 
out of left field, the iPhone 12 Max Mega. No, I'm, <laughs> no. I'm, making, I'm making that up. Yes. That's so, called the iPad. So the iPhone 12 Pro is at 6.1 inch, so the same as the iPhone 12. And then the iPhone 12 Pro Max is a 6.7 inch screen. So this is a the largest yeah. screen they've had on an iPhone. They've made the the case of the phone slightly bigger to accommodate this larger screen, but they, of course they've decreased the bezels and all that stuff. And I think this flat edge design really helps with that. Yes. Um, for comparison's sake, the Nintendo Switch is a seven inch screen. Oh, okay. And I happen to have one right here if you'd like to see what a seven inch display is. Of course the um, bezels are chonky on this. Deal, yeah. But that's a seven inch display right there. And so it's just wow. slightly smaller than that and of course the ratio is probably different um the screen you know the, the height to width ratio might be slightly different but that is a pretty darn big screen yeah and if you kind of round off the corners and shrink it down a little bit that's the iphone 12 pro max i yes it is i could carry i could carry a switch around my pocket yeah if i have my big cargoes on yeah you know. your jenko jeans <laughs> uh so yeah the iphone 12 pro uh the two models now They've got the three cameras on this again, where the iPhone 12, 12s only have the two camera. They've also mm -hmm. added LiDAR to the back of the phone. Yeah. Like, and, you know, I, I love technology. I love widgets and gadgets and all of these things. And I'm struggling to find a practical use for LiDAR. Of course, they've talked about various things, yes. and we'll discuss those in a moment. But I'm thinking in my day-to-day -day life, does LiDAR really make a difference? Yes. And I say this because if you're on the fence with, should I get the 12 or should I get the 12 Pro? It's got the LiDAR sensor. I'm thinking, just slow down and think to yourself, in my daily life, when do I need a LiDAR sensor? It's probably never. <laughs> yes. But let's do talk about some of the advantage advantages of lidar yes and so what they uh lidar is a light uh sensing technology it bounces light off things and they have it on the ipad pros with this they're building it in with the cameras and the three cameras already work together to try to get the best picture but this will give you more depth they were saying that uh the autofocus is like seven times faster and lower mm -hmm. light um, so it helps it's an assistant to the cameras now it also has uh, incredible implications for the augmented reality type yeah. stuff which we haven't seen a lot of mainstream use uh, but they were showing some interesting things with like some video editing where you could basically have the person in the forefront they didn't talk about it but they had a video playing and then they were like moving the background so it's kind of i'm thinking hmm. that it'll really help with the the portrait mode stuff because yeah. in the past the portrait mode stuff has used two different cameras or three to kind of compare the front and the back with the lidar you're actually using the real technology yeah. um to it's be able to separate it. yes yeah. it's getting true distance instead of guessing between two mm -hmm. photos at the same time and we were hoping that with this new lidar technology it would finally be able to catch your mustache yes. in a portrait mode because oh, portrait mode hope. just keeps cutting it off yeah. because it's using parallax between the multiple cameras to try to figure out what's in the front and what's in the back and of course machine learning to say this is a body this is a head this is a face well they don't have mustaches in their database of facial features and they really need to have that in there uh, yeah so we were joking that maybe you, you need to go down to apple into one of their fancy chambers and have them do 3d scans of your mustache so that it can they show can up in the in the sensor make it more accurate yeah uh, but lidar sensor it's going to it's going to lock on to real world objects for uh, augmented reality. So it's rock solid for photos. It's going to give you true depth information. I'm thinking for like Zoom calls where they have virtual backgrounds. Oh, yeah. It's faking oh. all of that um, just with machine learning. What could it do if it had real true depth data of where you are versus your background? I'm thinking it could be a virtual green screen even more accurate than what's there already. Yeah, so. yeah, and that's one of the things that I thought I had seen a rumor on, but they did not mention on stage today, doesn't mean it won't be there, would be portrait mode video mm. so that it would be able to live do. And speaking of video, they were talking about all the video processing. You can do Dolby HDR recording and... I mean, there is no other phone that can touch the video 
yeah. uh, quality on an iPhone, and it looks like they are really stepping it up. Now, let's jump back real quick to look, mm -hmm. and we'll come back to some of the spec type stuff. So this also has the flat sides, but we were both a little dismayed. <laughs> it's a very shiny, polished edge as yeah. opposed to kind of the more brushed or more uh, subtle matte look. Yeah. Uh, I'm not super excited about that. Yeah. I'm thinking about getting some sandpaper <laughs> and taking a little bit of edge off. They've got four finishes, Pacific Blue, Gold, mm -hmm. which is a gold gold. Like gold, gold, gold. Yes, yeah, silver, and I think graphite or titanium is what they're calling the other one, the, more the space gray, the dark yeah. um, dark look. But uh, it, they still look great. Uh, it looks like maybe they've made the notch a little bit smaller. I think they've made the notch the same size. It's that the screen has the gotten screen bigger. The screen is bigger, that's true. So it's relatively smaller. But yeah. Yes, um, we were discussing earlier the iPhone 4 was the pinnacle of industrial design with its sleek, rounded, curved, stainless, mm. brushed stainless steel band. Then they switched to the next year's model, an anodized aluminum flat edge, which was like, come on, stainless steel versus aluminum. You've kind of gone down in the world. And they've not brought that back until today, but they brought back the stainless steel band, but it's highly polished and shiny. I long for the days of that brushed look, um, yes. but I don't think it's going to be coming anytime soon. No. So yeah, it's the, the camera system. I mean, I could go on and on about all the improvements they made, but these, uh, the camera system on the iPhone 12 pros looks good. Now I have had the max in the past last mm -hmm. year. I just went to the regular, uh, iPhone 11 pro because they were very similar there are some advantages this year so mm -hmm. i am torn on the max you get 2.5 optical zoom versus on the telephoto versus 2.0 on the regular 12 pro so okay. you get a little bit more zoom and they're also doing uh some new stuff with the um, image stabilization. They're moving it from the lens. They've created their own complete new best system in the world <laughs> where it's actually the camera mechanism is stabilized. Yeah. And they said, so what did they say? That a handheld night mode photo, they can get up to two seconds of stabilization just handheld where before you mm. would need a tripod to get anything like that. Yeah. So yeah, in addition to moving the optics around the lenses they're moving the sensor around as well so it's uh magnetically buffered from vibrations and movements and so it's kind of kind of nice and i guess this is what digital slr cameras do because uh, you get your fancy lens which has the optical Im image stabilization and then you've got your camera body which has the sensor with a stabilization technique and they work together they've kind of brought that technology and shrunk it down and put it inside of your cell phone now so does it work? We'll have to find out and see. But yes, it is a distinct advantage over just the standard Pro model or, of course, the standard iPhone 12 and any other iPhone you've purchased in recent memory. So I think that's kind of the basics of the different iPhone models. Mm -hmm. Now, I was going to mention they showed at the end of it their full lineup of models that they're going to be selling this fall. They yeah. have the iPhone SE at the lowest price point, I believe that starts at three ninety nine. They're selling the iPhone ten R still from, from a couple two years, years ago. ago. That's the one I currently have. Yeah, the iPhone eleven from last year, the iPhone twelve mini and regular, and the iPhone twelve Pro and iPhone twelve Pro Max. So they've got a lot of different options now. Dave, we've had a little bit of a little bit of time to think, and I'm sure we'll learn more. Um, one thing I do want to say is the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 Pro go on presale this Friday and then are available next Friday, while the iPhone 12 Mini and the iPhone 12 Pro Max aren't until November 6th for pre-orders. So it's the middle ones that are yes. available now and the ones that are at the, the small end and the large end are coming later. Yes. Yeah. That's disappointing because I've been greasing the skids here at the Baylor household or yes. at the uh, Baylor studios 
saying, I really need a larger phone because I do a lot of jump desktop type stuff. I've got a 27 inch screen monitor that I'm trying to fumble around with on my small phone. I'm yeah. like, I just need a bigger phone. And it's been a couple years. Maybe I should get the larger display. And so as of right now, I am planning on getting the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And I'm assuming that I'll probably be getting the 128 gigabyte one. The 256 is probably what, 50 or $100 more? I think it might it, be $100. Yeah. More. So uh, I usually go for the larger size. However, I have the 256 gigabyte model of iPhone now, and I'm not really touching it. Yeah. I mean, I've got headroom. So would I regret not upgrading? I don't know. But in addition to getting the, the biggest, fastest, strongest iPhone, I'm also contemplating going on the month to month plan, the upgrade, the plan. upgrade plans. Yes. So I'd be paying about 45, 50 bucks a month in perpetuity. Uh, but next year when the new phone comes out, I just get the new phone. So whether I buy it outright, whether I go on the plan, I'm not exactly sure. That's still kind of up in the air. Again, I've been greasing the skids here about going on the monthly plan because it just seems to make sense. Yeah. But at the same time, my 10R from two years ago. And I was having this discussion with my daughter earlier today. She has the 11. I have the 10R. Both of these things are working fine. She says, I'm going to use my phone until it falls apart. Yeah. And I'm like, I really should be using mine until it falls apart because it takes great photos. It's fast enough. It runs everything I need to run. It may be just a little superfluous to upgrade, but I think I'm still going to upgrade. Yes. I think I'm going to. What about you? Well, I am on the iPhone upgrade plan, have been for a couple of years, so I can just get the new one, give my old one back, uh, and keep paying whatever it ends up being per month. Now, I like to get the best of the best, mm -hmm. and so the Max would be that with a little better camera stuff, um, but I also like the Pro, the non-Max size, mm -hmm. fits a little bit better in my pocket, but I think the deciding factor is the release date, because... I could get the iPhone 12 Pro next week, have it for a couple weeks. If I'm going, if I start hearing reviews and seeing photos where it's like this is a game changer on the Max, mm -hmm. I just return it and get the Max. And so I, I think that's what I'm leaning to is I'll probably try the Pro, and I'm guessing I'll probably stick with it because it'll be good enough good for enough, anything yeah. I'm doing until I get my pro max and then yes. I'm going to be oh. like, Oh, look at this photo I took. Oh, you couldn't do that on yours. Yes. <laughs> Cause, yes. Cause so I'm that's... zoomed in just a little bit closer. Um, so now let's talk about colors as we wrap things up here. Um, are you going to go with a, a, a space gray or whatever they're calling it this the year? Graphite, I believe uh, the white one or a, a Pacific blue. I, I kind of, think that you're kind of like one of these powder green type fellows. Yes, yes. I, I, all my devices, I mean, for several, several phones now, I've just gotten the space gray and I believe they're calling it graphite now. So mm -hmm. I will probably just go with that. I'll probably put a case. I really like the look of the new cases that they announced uh, for these phones with the MagSafe that'll just kind of snap on the back. Uh, I like a nice thin case, but yeah, I'll probably just go with graphite. I, the Pacific blue looks intriguing. But the problem is most people want, most people find it intriguing. So everybody wants to order that one. So it might be harder to pre-order because again, uh, if you look at the holistic cost, I put value on, you know, getting the new one as soon as possible. So that's something that's important to me. Now, one other thing I did want to mention, like I was talking with my brother-in-law, he's got, I believe an iPhone seven plus or something. He, the home button is breaking on it mm. and he just let me know over the weekend. I was like, well, wait at least till Tuesday to see. Yeah. Um, and so if you are more price conscious now, I think if you value taking pictures, the pros, or at least the iPhone 12s are going to be uh, really great for taking photos. The MagSafe, I think that's going to be a really cool feature. I have not been hot on wireless charging, mm -hmm. but one of the things that I could kind of see from the pictures is if you have a cord with one of these, magnetic charging things like a little puck yes you can be charging your phone and still hold it that's one of the things i don't like about wireless charging i guess you could hold your big wireless <laughs> charger behind your phone yeah. but you have to one of the things they talked about is wireless charging you have to make sure it's lined up we've talked about it not being efficient mm -hmm. uh, i did see it goes up to 15 watt charging so that's pretty good for mm -hmm. these phone devices but 
having these older phones available, the iPhone XR that you, you've been using for a couple of years at a cheaper price, I mean, they have a wide lineup. If you're price conscious, it's a, if that's something you put a lot of value in, um, I think they said for the iPhone 12 mini through Verizon, you can do like, if you have a trade-in, you can do, it can get down to like $12 a month. Mm-hmm. And that's like one lunch at McDonald's these days is 12 yeah. bucks. So um, putting yeah, some of that stuff into perspective. When you spread it out over time, it's not that big of impact. So most people from a, a variety of economic factors should be able to at least find one type of iPhone that's in their, their yes. uh, price range. So, And again, the 5G, the thing they talked about on the iPhone 12s, the whole range, that's, again, I don't think that's a make or break deal, but I think some of the other features are really great. The new harder glass. Mm-hmm. If you're somebody that breaks your phone, having four times stronger glass, yeah, that should factor into that yeah. calculation for you. So, um, you know, it's never an easy decision. It is for me because... Uh, I put a lot of value on having the latest and the greatest, and I love taking photos with my phone. Now I just have to decide between the regular size and the max size. Uh, but the time delay there kind of makes that one easier since I want to get it sooner. So, mm-hmm. um, but I think that's the event today. They didn't do some of the other stuff that's been rumored. We'll probably get another event next yeah, month. Yeah, with the Mac stuff. You know, yeah. They still have to unveil their Apple Silicon. Yes. But um, yeah, go ahead and go to the Apple website, click on iPhone. They have a compare model. Yes, it's very helpful. I'm on there now, and it's interesting to me that the Pacific blue of the Pro models and the regular blue of the non-Pro models is different. And it it triggers me a little bit, because if you like the one blue that's not available in the other model, uh, Apple is a master at getting you to spend more money. So, um, for example, if you're like, well, I really want... A gold phone, but they don't have it in the smaller size. So then I have to get the pro model and therefore you're spending more money. So right now, if I, if someone was twisting my arm and said, Dave, which one are you getting? I would probably get the Pacific blue one. I think it looks nice. Yeah. And I'm okay. If those around me also have the Pacific blue one, I'm, I'm not going to cry about that. Yes. But, uh, great looking phones. Apple continues to, uh, just, improve every year and it might not be life-changing uh improvements but i think and you know they're waterproof too again if that's something if you can save from having to replace your phone because Mm -hmm. it's waterproof it's ip68 (laughs) which goes up to six meters about 18 feet yeah my wife the other day was saying how do you you and sam clean your phones i said i just put some soap on it run it under the faucet i said but don't you do that (laughs) you have a 6s and it is not waterproof and you will ruin it but the newer ones they're just uh water resistant they're great Okay, well, I think we have rambled on long enough about all the new iPhone stuff and the HomePod Mini. We Mm -hmm. keep forgetting about (laughs) that thing that they announced. We introduced our show with that. Yes, and if you have any questions, wondering what you should buy, please let us know. We'll be back to a uh, normal episode next week, unless Apple does another announcement next week. Who Who knows? knows? (laughs) Uh, But thank you so much for listening. Now get out there and tech better. And they did, I didn't see it on stage, but they do have brighter two-tone flash with slow sync. Even brighter. And they're doing away with L and they're doing away with L E LCDs. And <laughs> this is gonna make a great outtake.